The purpose of this video is to explain the concept of a random variable. And to do that, I'm going to consider a very simple experiment in which a coin is flipped two times. And here are all the possible outcomes. We might get a head, then a tail, head, then a head, tail, then a tail, tail, then a head. And the set of all these possible outcomes we can refer to as a sample space. The technical definition of a random variable is that it is a real value function, the domain of which is a sample space. That's not terribly helpful. A better, better way to think about it is that, okay, in this particular example, the random variable is going to be the count of the number of heads. That's going to be a random variable, count of the head, number of heads. And considered in those terms, we can think of this random variable, count of the number of heads, as being a mapping that takes a particular outcome, head then tail, and then converts it into a number. In this case, one, which is the count of the number of heads. Similarly, tail then tail would be converted into a different number, zero. So, although it's not technically correct for the purposes of this workshop, what I'm going to be inclined to do is view the random variable as being the set, the set of all possible outcomes that might occur when the experiment is done. Now we can see where the element of randomness comes in. Because if I was to do the experiment, I might get this outcome, which would translate into a value of one. If I were to do the experiment tomorrow, or if you were to do the experiment, you might get a different value. So it's important to distinguish between this concept of a random variable that intuitively we can think of as being the set of all possible values and the actual realized value that we get when the experiment is done. So to continue on with this, I want to consider another simple experiment in which we have three red and one white marble in a sack. And what we're going to do is sample by replacement. We're going to pick up five marbles in sequence, pick one out, record its color, put it back in the bag. And our random variable is going to be the number of red marbles. That's going to be a random variable. And so if we think that the random variable can be considered the set of all possible outcomes, well, that's the set of all possible outcomes, the number of red marbles when we do this experiment. And we can represent the random variable as a capital letter Y. So that's our random variable. And what I want to do once again is draw the distinction between the random variable that I represent by uppercase Y, the set of all possible values, and then this lowercase Y that represents the realized value when we do the experiment. And what this table is meant to show is the meaning of this thing. I'm going to refer to it as P of Y. So P of Y is a function. It's a function that generates a probability distribution. So what's a function? Well, a function is really like a meat grinder. So there's our P of Y. That's our function. That's our meat grinder. And what we put in the meat grinder is Y, a particular realized value of the number of red balls when the experiment is done. And what comes out the other end is the probability of uppercase Y being equal to lowercase Y, whereas where uppercase Y represents the set of all possible outcomes, lowercase Y represents the outcome that actually occurred when we did the experiment. So to think about that some more, let's think about P of Y equals probability 
that y uppercase equals y lowercase. And this is a really important formula to have clear in your mind. To understand it, let's do a simple example. What's p of 1? That's the probability that uppercase y is going to equal the value of 1. In other words, what that means is that p of 1 is the probability that the random variable y, the set of all possible outcomes, will actually equal the value of 1 when the experiment is done, and that is equal to 0 0.015. Now, things can get a bit confusing in this workshop because what is p of y? That's the function. p of y is the meat grinder. Unfortunately, in this workshop, I will also have a couple other ways of thinking about what that means. And sometimes I'll use this thing, a second way of thinking what this means is to say that P of Y is the actual value that's realized, which in this case would be 0 0.015. So sometimes we think of it as the function, and sometimes we think about as a particular realization of the function. And there's also a third way I have in mind when I'm thinking of P of Y, and that is the set of all, excuse me, not here, over here, the set of all possible probabilities that might result. So it is a bit confusing when we've got this one thing, P of Y, that technically is the function, but can also be used in these other two values to refer to a specific probability or the set of all possible probabilities, but I'm really hopeful that the meaning will be apparent from the context. I want to switch topics now and talk about the expected value of a random variable. So this is the table we just saw. Here's our random variable. We can think of that informally as the set of all possible outcomes we get when we do the experiment. And then we've got this function p of y, which for each one of these individual outcomes gives us the probability that it will occur when the experiment is done. So now we have this set of relative frequencies, this set of probabilities, and we can refer to this as the probability distribution for a random variable. And we can represent this probability distribution sometimes as a table, other times as a formula. So here we've got P of Y as representing the probability distribution with this formula. And again, there's some ambiguity here because sometimes I use this P of Y just to say, hey, hey, it's a function. And other times I may be using it to represent the entire probability distribution. And then a third way of representing our probability distribution would be as a graph. So here are the different possible realized values of the number of red balls. And on the vertical axis, we've got the probability that that's the number of red balls we get when we do the experiment. The whole idea of expected value is that we're going to assume we're going to take an infinite number of samples from this probability distribution. So we're going to get either a 5 or a 2 or a 3, but the probability of getting any one of these number of red balls is going to be determined by this value here on the vertical axis. So in other words, the probability of getting four red balls is going to be about three times as great as the probability of getting two red balls. And so if we took the average of this infinite number of samples taken probabilistically from this distribution, the overall mean would be represented by mu 
the mean of the probability distribution. But there's also another way to represent it, and that's really the topic we're thinking about now, is the expected value of y. So you got this capital letter E, you've got these square brackets, and there you've got the name of the random variable. So we can think of the overall mean of an infinite number of samples taken probabilistically from this distribution would be the expected value of that random variable. And the formula for the expected value of a random variable is shown here. What you do is for each one of these specific values of y, you multiply it by the probability of y, and then you sum up over all the values of y. So here you take 0 times this thing gives you this, 1 times this gives you this, 2 times that gives you that. Sum all these things up and you get 3.75. So that's the expected value of the random variable y. Now in the case of the binomial distribution, the expected value of the random variable y, statisticians have been able to show that there's a simpler way to calculate it, and that's by multiplying n times pi, where in this case pi would be 0 0.75, because 3 quarters of the balls were red, and n would be equal to 5, because there were 5 trials, and that would also give us 3.75. So that's the concept of the expected value of a random variable.